Hey guys, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about all of the books that I want to read this month. So this August TBR is very ambitious and I am aware of that, but I think we can do it. My goal is to read 10 books this month, which for me, it's not like a ton, but it's above average. I've been averaging six to eight books per month. So I think pushing myself to read 10 is enough of a goal to be like a little bit of a challenge, but it's not unrealistic. And I'm so excited about every single book on this pile and I have been in such a reading mood so I really think August is gonna be our month, okay? So if you're new here, hi, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. I link every book that I talk about down below in the description if you want to go check them out or learn more about them just in case I don't explain them well because sometimes that happens. <laughs> I'm working on it. So yeah, I have a feeling with 10 books to talk about this is gonna get a little bit lengthy so let's just get straight into the books. The first one I have to talk about I've already finished so we're off to a good start. I'm filming this on August 2nd and that is Autobiography by Christina Lauren. This is a young adult contemporary romance with queer characters and I am very tempted to jump into my feelings and thoughts on this because I just finished it this morning but we're gonna try not to do that today. This follows our main character Tanner. He's a senior in high school and he's bisexual. His family moved to this very religious town in Utah from California and basically everyone in this town is Mormon and his family is not. His mom actually used to be but she left the church after a really negative experience and so now she has just a very negative opinion overall. So Tanner had originally been out in his old town but now in this new town where everyone's very judgy and whatnot they're keeping his sexuality a secret. And then he starts to fall for a Mormon boy in one of his classes and so the book follows his budding romance with this guy and the complications that come along with that and he's also for one of his classes he has to write an entire book and the book he's writing is basically an autobiography about their love story. I won't get too much into my thoughts on this because this is just a TBR but I will tell you that I liked it and it was really sweet and it was really touching. The second book on my TBR is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I'm about halfway through this one right now and this is our August book club pick. If you didn't know, I run a book club over on my Patreon page so I'll have that link down below in the description if you're interested in joining us. This book has been on my TBR since it came out in like 2016 I think. It's the first book in a series and I think it's actually technically adult. It's not classified as young adult and it's set in a world where it's basically never night, like the sun never sets. And our main character Mia is training to become an assassin to enact revenge for her slain family. And like I said, I'm halfway through this. I was very skeptical going into this because I had heard amazing things about this from pretty much everyone. I don't think I've seen a single negative review from someone that I follow. And when I first started reading this, I was very confused. It's one of those fantasy books that just kind of like drops you in the middle of what's going on and you're just so freaking confused and trying to figure out you know, what this world is, who this character is, what's going on. And I tend to not like that because I just get very frustrated with books like that. Not the case here. I'm really, really enjoying this. I definitely get the hype and I can't wait to pick up the sequel to this book as soon as I finish it. And I can't wait to have our discussion at the end of the month because there's so much to unpack with this book. So yeah, really enjoying this one so far and I'm hoping to finish this this weekend. Now, a lot of my TBR is kind of up in the air. My goal is to read 10 books overall, but what those 10 books end up being may change because I had put like a million books on hold at my library thinking it was going to take forever for me to get them because it said there was like a 22 week wait and now all of a sudden I've gotten like eight approvals all at the same time and I have all of these books that I want to read. So this is a tentative TBR. The next book on my TBR is actually one of book of the month YA's pick. If you didn't know I'm an affiliate for book of the month. The link is down below in my description if you want to check them out. You can get your first box for ten dollars and this is one of my absolute favorite books subscription services because they just send you the book. You don't get all of the trinkets and whatnot that come in the other book boxes and it's typically $15 per month with free shipping. But like I said, if you use the code in my description, you will get your first box for $10 and you go on their website and they have like five or six books that you can choose from each month and you pick which one you want. And so the book that I picked this month, I forgot that they like wrap it in plastic. I need something to open this. We're gonna use an earring. Honestly, all of the books this month sounded interesting to me and I would have been happy to get any of them, but this one, really stuck out to me. You can always tell when it's a cloudy day when I'm filming because the lighting does this. That is House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig. So basically it's about this girl Annalie and her family lives in this manor by the sea and there used to be 12 of them but four of her sisters have died 
all in like really tragic ways. And so now all of the surrounding villages are saying that their family is cursed by the gods. And our main character is having these like visions that are making her think that these deaths of her sisters were not accidents. And you know, whenever the description says she gets involved with a mysterious stranger, it's gonna be a romance. So yeah, basically this just sounds like a really intriguing fantasy mystery, maybe a little bit of romance. I haven't been in the mood for fantasy basically all year and I'm just now kind of getting back in the mood for it. And for whatever reason, when I read this description, I was just like, yes, that sounds awesome. And so it's also a retelling of one of the Brother Grimm's fairy tales, The Twelve Dancing Princesses. That's what it's called. If you're familiar with that, I'm personally not, but I'm always a sucker for fairy tale retellings. And from what I've seen, it's gotten really good reviews so far. So I'm really, really excited about this one. Okay, so the next two books on my TBR I've talked about in a couple of previous videos are Brightly Burning by Alexa Dunn and These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. These are both library books that I need to return soon. So I need to read them soon. Brightly Burning is a sci-fi Jane Eyre retelling and Alexa Dunn is an author tuber here on YouTube and I love me some science fiction, I love me some romance, and I love me some retelling so this just sounds like it's gonna be right up my alley. I know some of you guys commented on the last video that I mentioned it in that you thought it was really cute and you really liked it so I'm really hopeful about this one. And then These Witches Don't Burn. I actually don't really know that much about this one but people were telling me that they loved it. I know it has queer characters and our main character is a witch. She's an elemental and she lives in Salem, Massachusetts, and she has to keep her magic a secret. And this is a debut novel as well. It is equal parts sweet romance and thrilling mystery. When I saw this book, it reminded me of Undead Girl Gang. If you remember that release, I think that came out last year. And I had been super excited for Undead Girl Gang because it sounded really cool. And then I guess, I think I gave it a three out of five stars. I was just a little bit disappointed with it. So in my mind, this is a do-over. So I'm hoping I enjoy this one more than I enjoyed that one because I love witchy things. And this sounds like it could be so cool. The next book on my TBR I've also talked about in a lot of videos lately that is Crashing the A-List by Summer Heacock. This has been on my TBR since June and I have started it. I'm over 100 pages in. I just haven't finished it yet and it's not because I'm not enjoying it. I'm actually loving this book. I've just been reading it really slowly. It's one of those things where I read like a chapter or two of it before bed but that's the only time that I read it, so I'm not making very much progress. This book is about a young woman who's currently unemployed. She just got laid off from her job as an editor in publishing, and to make some money, she started clearing out storage units where she found some old files from an escort service. And one of the guys who was on the documents is a famous movie star, and he gets the wrong idea that she's trying to blackmail him. And when they're arguing about it, paparazzi gets a shot of them, and now everyone thinks she's his girlfriend and so then the two just kind of go with it and decide to fake date. I love the writing style in this book. She manages to make every sentence in here amusing, even just like the regular ones, just the way that she writes it. Everything is so witty and just fun to read. So I'm really enjoying this. I'm hoping to like actually dedicate more time to finishing it this month. This is an ARC copy, but I think this came out in July, so it is available now. The next book, I have been meaning to read this book for 800 years. And it's The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. So, if you didn't know, the last book in the Cruel Prince series, Queen of Nothing, the publication date got moved up. And now it's coming out in November. And I read both of those books, The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King, earlier this year. And it's one of those series that like, I enjoyed it at the time, I really liked it, but now it's been months since I've read them and I still can't stop the thinking about them. And I really want the third book in the series. And so to fill the void until the third book is here, I've decided I wanted to pick up another Holly Black book. And this is the only one of hers that I own that I haven't read yet. And I've heard mixed things about this. I know some people really didn't like this book. Some people loved it. So I'm just trying to go in with an open mind and hopefully I will enjoy it. I tend to enjoy her books. So this book is set in a world where humans and fairies or like the fair folk exist knowing of each other like side by side. And there's this boy in the woods in a glass coffin with horns on his head that people go to see as like a tourist attraction. And so our main characters are Hazel and Ben and they are two siblings who've kind of grown up seeing this man in the coffin and like making stories up about him and stuff. And then suddenly the boy wakes up and the rest of the description is vague. So we don't really know what goes on from there, except it's gonna be a romance and you know there's the fairy world and everything and we'll see. We'll see about this. I don't think I'm gonna like this as much as I liked The Cruel Prince. I believe this is a standalone, 
which actually gives me hope because another one of her standalones, The Coldest Girl in Cold Town, I really, really liked. So if this is anything like that, I think I'll really enjoy it. But either way, I was just in the mood for a Holly Black book and I saw that my library also had the audiobook available. So now I have the physical book and I also have the audiobook so I can switch back and forth. And I'm finally gonna get to this book that's been on my TBR since it was released years ago. The next book I have on my TBR is an audiobook and this is Sometimes I Lie. This is one of the many audiobooks that the hold I had on it just became available for. When I read the description for this book, this sounds like everything I love in a book in one. This sounds like the perfect book for me. You guys know I love well done psychological thrillers and mysteries and stuff. I've read a lot of lackluster ones this year and so I'm really hoping this one surprises me because it has an unreliable narrator. It's supposed to have like a really intricate plot and it's supposed to be an intense thriller which thrillers in particular I like to go in knowing nothing about. I've only read like the beginning part of the summary which is my name is Amber Reynolds. There are three things you should know about me. One, I'm in a coma. Two, my husband doesn't love me anymore. And three, sometimes I lie. And I know that the book is told in two different timelines, the present and then what happened before she ended up in the hospital. So I'm really, really excited for this one. I haven't read a thriller that I've like genuinely been impressed by in a long time and this sounds really good and I've seen good reviews for it too. So yeah, I will keep you guys posted on this one. Hopefully it doesn't let me down. And then the last book that I've picked out for myself that's on my TBR, like I said, totally subject to change that I picked out like a love story. This is another queer romance novel but it's set in 1989 in New York City during the AIDS crisis and I decided I wanted to pick this one up after I enjoyed autobiographies so much. I'm just kind of in the mood for the contemporary romances right now and this one has just like a stunning dust jacket and I'm a shallow person so that's enough to make me want to read it but also the description of it sounded really really good. So yeah I'm really excited about this one. I actually haven't heard anyone talking about this lately so I have no idea what the reviews for this look like so far but I think I'm just gonna go into this one blind and see how I feel about it. I kind of like doing that. I feel like I go back and forth on whether or not I want to see reviews and other people's thoughts on books before I go into them because on the one hand obviously I want to know if the book is worth my time and there are certain people whose reviews I trust and so when I see that they love the book I'm like oh then it must be a good book but at the same time I feel like inevitably that colors my experience with the book for better or for worse because I'm just going in with certain expectations and I have learned about myself that, that can really ruin a reading experience for me if I go in with too high of expectations. I would rather go in with no expectations at all or low expectations and be pleasantly surprised. So, so yeah, those are all of the books that I'm hoping to read in August. Make sure to let me know down in a comment if you've read any of these and what you thought of them. Of course, I would love to hear your thoughts or tell me what you're planning to read this month. Are you also being being super ambitious like me and going for an absurd number or are you kind of burnt out after the reading rush and giving yourself a break because like valid. I feel kind of left out because the reading rush happened over a week that was really busy for me so I didn't get to participate so now I'm having my own little like readathon this month where I'm trying to read a lot and I know Brit over at Basically Brit she's holding um, one of her 24 hour basically readathons this month, I think on like August 10th. So that's perfect. I'll hopefully finish one of these books on that readathon day. So yeah, I'm sure this video is already long enough. So I'm going to stop talking. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here, I would love it if you would subscribe and stick around. I put up at least two new videos every single week. If you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and maybe go follow me on social media. Those are all down below in the description. And other than that, I'll just see you guys in my next video very, very soon. Bye. So hit me. So hit me. So hit me. First a confession. With you, I feel a connection. With